What's going on YouTube? This is Michael from Groundbreaking Gear and today we have the Nintendo Classic Mini and the 2.4 GHz wireless Turbo Edition controllers. We're taking it back to a little bit of retro. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so here we have the Nintendo Classic Mini. Now this thing is absolutely baller. 30 games pre-installed, but that's not where this is going. Not only are we going to do an unboxing, but we're also going to look at how to install all NES games onto this, um, onto the uh, hard drive that's on here, and let's start playing all of those old retro Nintendo games. All right, so let's crack this bad boy open. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm like a little kid again. So right off the bat, you have the manual, operation manual. Yeah, controller one, controller two, hook it up. There you go, awesome. All right, man, this thing is super small. I don't know if anybody remembers those old school NESs, but man, I do. And I remember opening it up for the first time playing Super Mario Brothers. It was awesome. All right, so the, the little lid doesn't open up. <laughs> All right, so it's, it's still cool. We have the power button. We have the reset button. A lot smoother than the old NES. The two, uh, port one, port two. This was usually meant for the fan, the exhaust. We have the DC in, HDMI out. And uh, yeah, I mean, this thing is absolutely sick. And it's tiny as hell, look at that. I mean, this is the size of my hand. It fits in the size of my hand. I am super, super stoked about this thing. And again, 30 games. Let's see what games actually come with this thing. So you can see right off the bat, I mean, there's they go through the big, the big ones where you have Mario Brothers, Zelda, uh, Kirby, you know, Metroid, Pac-Man, Super Mario Brothers 3, Final Fantasy, oh my god, Castlevania, Punch-Out, <clears throat> and then a handful of others. Oh my god, this is going to be awesome. To top it all off, we're putting all the NES games on here. So forget about this 30, scratch that. This is going to be one of the sickest systems out there. Alright, so let's see what else is in the box. Flip this open. We have a controller. Wired controller. Oh my god, talk about old school. The buttons feel the D-pad, select start, BA, turbo run with, uh, with uh, Super Mario Brothers. Oh my god, this thing is awesome. This brings me back. I'm like a little kid again. All right, let's take this out. Let's see how long this cable is. It doesn't look too long. I think they feel like you're gonna sit right in front of it. So what are we talking about? A two, two foot cable, two and a half feet cable? I mean, that's, that's not much. I'll be playing right at my, uh, right in front of my TV. I'll need glasses after. This is crazy. So this is about as much playability as you have, which is why we have the wireless controllers. Um, you know, you put this on a 65 inch or a higher TV, you don't want to be sitting right in front of it. Or maybe you do. Uh, who am I to say? But anyways, so it doesn't come out. That's nice. It's definitely in there. It has two clasps on the controller. You push those in and then you're able to pull out the, um, uh, the connector. So that's really nice. Alright, let's put the controller here. Let's see what else is inside. And then they give you some wires. They should give you some wires, how expensive this thing was. And there should be more than 30 games, but we'll fix that. All right, so let's see what else we got. We have the USB power in, no power brick, of course. Yeah, no power brick. So that, that you're on your own. And then an HDMI, HDMI cord. Uh, let's see if this is longer than the and the controller cord at least. And again, you're looking at, I don't know, four feet, which is a good length. 
put it right underneath your TV or whatever. So, not bad. Nice thick cable. It's actually really nice looking. And it feels real good in the hands. Um, this is perfect. All right. So, again, this controller is not, is not the best considering that it's only... I mean, it's, oh, it's only two, two and a half feet long. Um, so we're gonna move on to what I purchased was the wireless controller for the NES, the 2.4 gigahertz turbo edition. Yes, turbo edition. All right, so I got two. This only comes with one. All right, let's open this guy. Nothing else in the box. They give you a charging cable. USB micro, let's see how long this is. So this is about a five foot cable. This is actually nice. You could charge these up, maybe get a charging station. And then here's the adapter that goes into your system. So you just plug that in. It sticks out a little bit, but not a big deal at all. And then here's the turbo controller. So you have uh, turbo, either A or B, you have an AB turbo together, you have your B, your A, select, start, and the feel to the D-pad is actually really nice. Here is your uh, charging port, your micro, USB, and that's it. I mean, there's not too much to these old style controllers, but the gaming that came with this was just awesome. And let's see, I mean, is it that much different in size? It's actually not. Literally the same size, except one is wireless and one is wired. So I got two of these. Let's open up the other one. Throw that to the side. They actually give you no manual, so what's on the back? Does it even tell you? I'm assuming that there is no syncing and it just connects based on the receiver, but we will test that out. So here's the other, here's the other port. No identification, so if you get these mixed up with something else, you're screwed. I would probably label these somehow, so at least you know if you want to move it to another system. But they fit real nice right next to each other. And again, they also have the, um, the little... Uh, the little hinges on the side to pop it out so they won't come out on their own. So not bad at all and they snap in really nice. Oh my god, I'm super, super excited. And again, here we go, two wireless controllers. And it will be time to get our gaming on really, really shortly. Alright guys, let's, uh, let's hack this bad boy put all the games on it, and then test it out. All right, the first thing we want to do is extract the Hatchi files. Now let's browse into the Hatchi folder, and we're going to run the Hatchi.exe as an administrator. Let's flash the original kernel. Say yes. Here we're going to follow the steps. When you get to step five, click on install driver. Notice that a black screen will come up, which is the command prompt. Processing data in the background. Found USB device, installing driver. Now you'll notice that there is a background process running. This takes a little while to execute.
Done. Perfect. So you want to close this black screen and then you want to click on kernel and flash the custom kernel. Say yes. So you should already be set up with the dev mode. It's going to go right through. It automatically knows that the driver is installed and it goes right through. This takes a little while. Now we can upload NES ROMs. So now we're going to unselect the original 30 games. We're going to add more games. And we're going to browse to our ROMs location for our Nintendo system. Now I started creating my own Launchbox Arcade, so I have pretty much every ROM imaginable for all systems. So for me, I just have to find my NES folder right there, ROMs, it's a USB drive so it takes a second to spin up. And we're going to take the zip files. So all the ROMs are going to stay compressed. So what we want to do is in the search ROMs field, type in asterisk.zip. This way we have all the zip files. No other files will be there, no text files, nothing else if anything was left behind. Now we're going to highlight all the files and I just want to show you real quick how many files are actually in this ROMs folder. So right click properties. We have a thousand and one files. Only 104 megabytes in size too. So now here it's telling us that there's a patch for the system. What I rather do is not yes to all, I rather say yes so I can see that which ones need it. And then here we get a an error saying that there is no mapper for this NES um, ROM. Do we want to import it anyways? And I say no. And I do this for every game. So I know which ones had a problem, which ones had patches. I do not click yes to all. But at least you have an understanding of what files need to be patched and what files uh, are not supported. All right, so now we have all the games. And if you notice on the bottom left, 852 games selected. 852. And we're only, only utilizing 177 megabytes of storage. It's freaking awesome. So now what we want to do is look at the controller hacks. We do want to enable the use button configuration to reset and what we're going to do is select it to see what the button config is and it's down and select will get you back to the main menu. We're going to go and click on file and then download box art for all games. So this takes a little while. This is actually searching Google for all of the box art and we'll download it automatically. All right, we're done. Not too bad at all. It took roughly about six, seven minutes. Now what we want to do is we want to change the page folder structure. And we're going to set the maximum games per page to 50. Now what I'm doing is checking each one of the ROMs for the correct box art. If you're going to do it, you might as well go big, right? Go big, go home. So I'm going to check 852 
and make sure that they have at least a nice looking uh, box art for the display. If they don't, I'll click on the Google. I'll browse to a better file and pick one from there. So I did notice that there's a few games missing from the list that I don't have, that the original has. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the few back that I found missing from the original 30. So we're gonna deselect anything that I don't want. So Legend of Zelda 2, a couple of these other ones appear that I know that are already on the system. And I see the ROMs. For some reason I can't find my Zelda in my ROMs list. And Punch-Out is actually Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, but they changed that. Now let's synchronize the selected games with the NES. And we're done. Now let's get gaming. Click OK, file and exit, disconnect, and reconnect to the TV.